Meanwhile, the Germans are pounded unmercifully by air bombings, artillery, and armor. They retreat in stunned disorder through what becomes known as the Falaise Gap. The commanders desperately order their troops to hold open the gap long enough to get their panzer divisions through so they can take a stand at the critical location of the Seine River. While eight infantry and two panzer divisions are captured by the Allies, over 49,000 combat troops manage to escape. Now Patton's army races to the Seine. I was a battalion motor sergeant. We had them on the run five or six miles out of Paris, and they just left their equipment and everything and, and, and took off. I'm telling you, they just they threw down their weapons and ran. The infantry that we took with us just continued on and took, took the prisoners and we uh, repaired the roads and the bridges and that autobahn because that's what we were going to use. Finally, the Germans in retreat reach the Seine. They're in no condition to fight back. When it's hard to explain when you're on a front line, the soldier is on a front line, because you know it's danger, yeah? You pray, you are afraid, it is tough, you know, front line. We didn't have much peace. Numerous spearheads surge across western France, at times gaining as much as 50 miles in one day. Chartres and Orléans fall, and beyond the Seine, Paris. When the French greeted us, they loved us, they really did. They would give us their last egg, which we'd never seen, but we wouldn't take anything off of them. They really, they went all out for us. They went crazy. They celebrated. I think they're still celebrated. Just when the army's barreling ahead, Patton's gas supply runs out. The whole advance comes to a halt. Patton orders part of his reserve force to drain their tanks and transfer their gas to attacking units. But this Band-Aid procedure only brings limited supplies. Now, for the first time, the Allies experience the type of supply limitations that has plagued the German army. There are virtually no stocks between Normandy and the small army depots 300 miles away. Each of the Allied army units expects priority for gasoline and oil. Tension develops between Patton and other army commanders because each wants a full share of supply and transport. No general can win on this battlefield without receiving his delivery of material. Without ammunition or fuel, the soldiers don't advance. The retaking of France is now in jeopardy. August 1944, the Allied push across France gets bogged down as armored divisions run out of gasoline. To get the attack moving again, a last-minute supply line is cobbled together by the Allied command. The Army Transportation Corps organizes 141 truck companies, consisting of over 3,000 men, into the Red Ball Express. Their plan calls for a looped one-way traffic route stretching across northwest France from the supply depots to the fighting fronts and back again. It was a whole battalion of trucks and all black soldiers running that express. They, were the, they ran to and fro hauling. Our orders were to unload them as quickly as possible and send them back. Feed them, give them supplies, food. All the gas came in five-gallon cans. And we had to furnish our own people to unload the trucks when they got there, which didn't take long. And we, we dumped them in and give them the cans back and they'd go back for more. By the time they went back and got more, we were 20, 30 miles away from there. Takes a lot of gas for a tank. 
And as we moved forward, they would move forward with us with their camps. And they did a, oh, they did a great job for us. I, I can't say one thing about them. And they lost a lot of people, too. Traffic control points are established in all major towns to record the movement of convoys, check their destination, and determine their cargo. Supporting services have their job, too. Thousands of road markers are placed along 800 miles of roadway. The Signal Corps strings endless miles of telephone and telegraph wires. Replenished with gas and ammunition, the American armored columns again surge forward. We just had to be careful ourselves that we didn't go too fast. And that was one thing Patton, he, he always went too fast. He'd go until he ran out of gas. I'm not kidding. It's, that's, he, that's the way he operated. Always advanced. We've never retreated one time in all the time I was with him. We were always, always forward. August 29th, Patton's 3rd Army has crossed the Marne, capturing Reims and chalot sur marne Patton now aims his armored spearheads toward Verdun, Saint-Mahil, and Commercy, 